Chuck. Yes. You get tired of these these explainers? Of course I, not. I, I have an unlimited, I could do this forever, Chuck. Okay, I, I'm going to take you up on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to see how long we can go. <laughs> All right, until you, yeah, until you just give up and just yeah. run away screaming, right? All right, so I got one for you. Okay. Remember when you were a kid and you joked about, you know, you could just, if you dug, dug a hole through the earth, like you'd come out on the other side. And yes. it, here in the United States, everyone said, oh, you dig a hole, end up where? where? China. In China, of course. Of yeah, course. That was the whole idea. Yeah. That was the whole idea. And I remember like researching that when I was early middle school. I might have been in sixth grade. So sixth or seventh grade. And it was like, first of all, the center of the earth would vaporize you. <laughs> so this is not a, it's not a workable thing. It's not just, oh, given enough time, I'll dig a hole through the earth and end up in China. That's the first point. Second, if you're gonna go through the earth, chances are you wanna go through the center and come out the other side where that takes you. And going through the center from the Northern Hemisphere puts you in the Southern Hemisphere. And you're not in China when that happens. So in fact, if you, if you do the geometry on Earth's shape, dig a hole from the United States, come out the other side, you end up in the South Indian Ocean. Oh, okay. okay. Which, yeah. yeah. That's not good. Because no, it's not good. <laughs> you're just going to end up flooding America. <laughs> oh, because all the water will drip. You just drained the Indian Ocean into America, so that's not good. That's uh, not good. Yeah. That, no. That's not good. Uh, so, but let's imagine you could do such a thing, all right? So you dig a hole through Earth all the way through. So Earth's diameter is like 8,000 miles or so. So... And then you look through and like you see some light at the end, right? So you, you got like a train person with the, with the flagman, right? With the light. And so, all right. So what do you want to do next? Well, you got to jump in the hole now. <laughs> you got to jump in the hole. <laughs> I, thought, I mean, what else is there to do? <laughs> Why else I, do this at all? <laughs> right. I just dug all the way through to the other side of the earth. Two things I'm going to do. One, I'm going to show everybody my massive guns because, quite frankly, I got jacked on that trip. That's a lot of exercise. <laughs> digging then, that out. Right. Digging that out, man. That's mm -hmm. serious exercise. And then the second thing I'm going to do is go back to where I came from, jump right back in that hole, you know. <laughs> All right. So the funny thing is, if you actually did dig the hole, um, you don't have to jump through it because you came out the other side having successfully dug it. But let's ignore that detail as well, all right? Right. You, you, maybe she had some device that plowed through, like a like a, a pineapple corer, right? It just goes through, comes out, there's the hole. So now watch. Now you jump in. Okay. Uh, let me describe what happens. I don't know if you ever thought about this. So there's at all times a force of gravity between you and Earth manifested from Earth's center. And any amount of Earth that is outside of your radius from the center of the Earth has no net effect on how much you weigh or what the force is that's accelerating you. So in other words, it, it, oh, it's brilliant. This is, it's a brilliant, you can demonstrate this as an early physics 101 using Newton's laws of gravity. So watch what happens. As you, as you fall in, there is Earth on the other side of you pulling at you, right? There's right. like the center of the Earth and all the Earth from there to China, okay, or the, the Indian Ocean. But then there's the Earth above your head trying to pull you back. Right. Okay? It turns out that even though you're getting closer to parts of the Earth on the other side and farther from the parts of the Earth that are above your head, the net force of each of those sides of the earth exactly cancel on you. And the only thing that matters is how much earth is between your feet and the center of the earth. The sphere that's between the bottom of your feet and the center of the earth, that's the only net gravitational force pulling on you. And since that is getting less and less and less, the force of gravity on you is becoming less and less and less. And so your weight, if you like paused and weighed yourself, you would start weighing less and less and less until you got to the center where you weigh zero. Nothing. Nothing. However, however, <laughs> this whole time you have been accelerating. Accelerating, right. 
So you've been moving faster and faster and faster by a lower and lower force of gravity, but your speed continues to increase. And you hit a maximum speed at the center of the earth. So even though you don't weigh anything and nothing's pulling on you, you, you won't overshoot. slow down. Right. You, you, you overshoot. Don't. Yeah. And you overshoot by exactly the right speed to perfectly make it out of the hole on the other side. Uh, because the further you get away from the center, the greater the gravity would become the pull. And it starts slowing it's you down. Slow, it's a breaking you. It's a, it starts breaking. Uh, on the way in, it speeds you up. On the, on way, the out, way out, it, it slowed breaks. you down. And it's a perfect, uh, ignoring air resistance and monsters in the center, you know. Right. Uh, yeah, and, and, and the Morlocks and, right. And <laughs> the Middle Earth the, people. The Middle Earths <laughs> and the Chuds. Got to remember the Chuds. Because, <laughs> you so know. All the creatures that, that right. lurk in the center of the Earth, ignoring them, that they don't want to eat you, and the air resistance and all of that, it's an exactly symmetric journey. The speed up to the middle, the drop in your weight as you pass through the middle till it's zero, the increase in your weight and the, and the uh, overshooting, the decrease, and right when you get to the other side. If nobody grabs you, you'll fall back down the hole. So you got to make sure somebody gets somebody's you. Good. You, need a, you need a spotter. Somebody's spot. got to catch you. <laughs> somebody's somebody's got to be Got to catch you. Okay, so now that journey, you know how long that journey takes? No. This is 8,000 miles. 8,000 miles. 8,000 miles. You know how long it takes? Uh, Take a no. guess. Okay. Uh, I'm going to say, um, I don't know, an hour and a half. An hour and a half. That's nice. That's nice. Nice guess. Yeah. No, but it's a nice guess. Uh, it takes 45 minutes. Wow. 45 minutes. So you can easily wait that one out, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, so... And Man. it required no other than the effort to dig the hole. The traveling the eight thousand miles was completely exploiting the force of gravity. Gravity, not only to speed you up, but also to slow you down. You didn't need oh brakes. Oh my God! It's the best log flume ride ever. Log flume, exactly. Oh. <laughs> Just cross right. your arms and go for it. Then go for it, exactly. So, uh, so now, uh, so let's say nobody does grab you, and then you come back. So then you'll emerge, how many minutes later? Back where you started? Uh, 45 minutes. Another 45 minutes. So 45 yeah. minutes plus 45 minutes, there's your hour and a half. There's an hour and a half. So now watch. Round trip. The round trip is an hour and a half to get back to where you were. By the way, that's the same amount of time it takes for a satellite to orbit the Earth. Oh, snap. Oh, snap. Oh. That is awesome. Oh, that takes a Z snap on that one. Yeah, so, because so it's in free fall. It's in free fall the entire way. Both the of entire you are in ways. free fall. Dude, that's amazing. It's amazing. And you, you do this in like physics 101 and you've come out the end of the equation and it's like, wow, that is deep and that's fun to know. Yes. So you, 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 so one goes sideways, 17,000 miles an hour, you're in orbit. One just drops in. You, you, you do a high five yeah. <laughs> as you cross on the other side, and then you come back and you meet again. So that's a low Earth orbit. We'll get you that. So now, if you don't want to use fuel to get from any one place to another, what happens if you just simply dug holes between any pair of places on Earth whether or not you go through the center. So here we are on the East Coast. Let's dig a hole through the Earth to California. It won't go through the center of the Earth, no, because it'll just, it'll cut through sort of sideways a little bit, all right? But it's still a hole, all right? How long will that take? If you do the math, it turns out any hole through the Earth across any distance between any two points is 45 minutes. What? Ladies and gentlemen, meet the concept of the gravity train. Dig a hole between any two points and it'll take you 45 minutes to cross. You do the math, it's 45 minutes. So it's not useful to go from like, you know, Jersey to Manhattan. Even, <laughs> you might as well just get in a car and do that because the hole, it's, it doesn't work. The hole's gotta get deep and, all right, so here's a, a problem. If it goes through the center of the earth, you you can just jump in, 
you don't need tracks, but if you're sort of not going through the center of the earth, you need a really low friction rail system that you can fall in on. And so you need low friction because friction will eat up your energy and then you won't make it to the other side. Right. So that's a gravity train. That's what happens if you jump through. Again, ignoring the middle earth creatures, the monsters, the, tro the you know, the, the undersea trolls right. and all the rest. And, all right. And, the, and of course the chuds, because there goes the neighborhood once you see them. <laughs> so I, I hope I settled that for you. That, that is cool, man. It goes back to elementary school for you. Yeah. Well, I, I wish they had taught me that in elementary school. I might. Then what I would you have a, done? I might be a scientist now. <laughs> this is a lament. <laughs> okay. If only they had taught me about the gravity train, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so, but what would happen is you, the whole world becomes Swiss cheese, right? And how right. would you get the whole through the magma? You know, all the places that feed volcanoes. You know, there are details that are not entirely worked out. But in principle, this can work. If, for example, if you had a completely dead moon with no plate tectonics or anything, because you don't want like continental plates to shift while you're en route, closing the hole. <laughs> guys, uh, looks, looks like we got a road closer up ahead, guys. <laughs> road closing. Um, fortunately, that means we're all going to die, and uh, that's it. <laughs> you know, we're so, stuck with the with the right. it, it, Middle Earth monsters. Yeah. <laughs> um, so all right, that's all. That's all. I love it. Uh, that's, that's, all, that, that's a very cool thing. That's all you got here. All right, thanks, Chuck, for hang, hanging with me. Absolutely. Keeping that spirit. I'm Neil deGrasse Tyson, bidding you to keep working up. <laughs> <laughs>